from pro post that can't even do it wow. from post wrestling yeah i know from post wrestling from andrew thompson interviews from just all around the internet from london this past weekend my personal goat the absolute goat in my opinion the great andrew thompson andrew what's up buddy joe pearl jeremy lambert what's going on good man how, how you feeling how you man look at look, look at y'all man Looking good. What's going on, fellas? How, How you doing? doing? It's way too early on a Friday. It's no, no. Tired, Andrew. <laughs> Tired. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good, man. I can't complain. I'm feeling good. Had me gave me a good sleep. Good, good couple of hours of sleep today. Feeling all right. <laughs> feeling pumped. I'm glad. I'm glad you're feeling okay after London. I know a lot of people kind of came back sick from that trip. So, Dude, I'm glad you're okay. I got lucky. Like, I mean, but I, I think that, th I mean, I, I don't know if this helped because I mean, I know even back in, um, back in November when I left the, uh, the full, when I was at full gear, I think that was for, yeah, November full gear, I had gotten sick from that. So I did this time, I made sure to just make sure to double up on the mask and, and just say, just hope that I came back. But I feel great. And then, uh, I know it was some travel delays too. I got lucky as hell on that too because I, I had the early flight out of London on Monday morning. And I know like the delays started like around noonish or like around like early, you know, around 11 uh, a.m. Eastern uh, here. So I was like, I got lucky, but I caught the back end of those delays uh, coming back home. So I got home pretty late Monday, but I, I think I'm pretty thankful to, you know, got out when I did out of London. Well, tell us about All In and just being part of that crowd and with 81,000 people and the overall experience being at the show. I mean, it, it was it was a good time, man. It, it was a. Uh, a fine show. I, I think that's the, the best way to put it. I know it was a lot of uh, critiques going into it because, you know, the scheduling of All In and All Out happened in back-to-back -back weeks. So a lot of people were, um, mo mostly a lot of people at, uh, in the UK were expecting like this, this dream S card that, that, that was, you know, that they thought were good, that they were going to get coming out of uh, what were coming into All In. I mean, I, I, I thought like just the overall experience, it, it was a good time. I always think when you go to like any or oh, most professional wrestling shows when you're there to experience it live, like whether it's an independent show, whether it's a show with 20,000 people, 15,000, whatever it is, it's always um, enhances your experience as a viewer because you're getting to see it as things going and you're in the venue with all these other people. So I, I think that enhanced it. Um, as far as like the, the, the match card and stuff, I, I, I thought it was fine. I mean, I, I did think like even going into it, I was like, I, I'm kind of wondering how things were gonna uh, pan out, you know, with the uh, another pay-per-view happening a week after. And like I can definitely see some of the, uh, the 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 criticisms that other people felt about like you know it maybe not feeling like a the maybe the card not having the sort of like I, I guess those sort of dream like matches if you will that that people were expecting but like just from my overall experience I I thought it was a a fine show and they I think they over delivered on the um on the when, when, when you sort of compare what, what people were expecting versus like what we got, I thought they sort of d delivered in, in, in a sense as far as like just making sure that people were satisfied with, with, with coming to the show. And I, I had a good time overall. When you got there, when you got into the venue and you got into the, to the stadium proper and you saw everything set up and laid out the way it was, what was your first impression? Because I know people had a lot of uh, ideas of how the stage should look and yeah. how it should be. What what do you think? So So when I first got in, I was kind of uh, so, so I was like somewhat confused of, like where the entrance was because like my, my like it, it had the the all in. Well, I mean, I, honestly, I think it was just my fault because I wasn't paying attention. Like I'm looking at the it was like a big thing right here that said all in, and and I'm looking over here like I see like the uh, like the tarp and like where the cameras are set up, and I'm like, is that the entrance over there? And then I'm like, pay attention, dumbass. Like look at the big all in sign with the big gap in the middle. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that's where the entrance is. And like but once I saw that, I was like, well, that's a that's a cool setup. Like, I mean, at, at first I was expecting like some big grandiose, like, you know, big setup, but I mean, it, I, I think that was a, it, it was a cool setup. And like, I think it, when you like get that, uh, that, that shot they had, they had like the Roman camera, like floating around. I, I think it definitely made it look cooler when you saw like the, um, that upper section behind the entrance, like you get to see the whole thing. It, I, I think it was a good setup. And I know, I know Tony Khan, he had said something about like, uh, on the, the post, uh, Post show scrum, something about thinking about different stage setup for 2024. So maybe they could, you know, flip it around next time. But I, I thought it was a, I thought it was a nice setup. Yeah, Tony's, Tony's feeling was uh, 
you can change it up next year, but then you might lose seats. And is it worth it this time? And it, it, it's true. Like this, the setup to me, the configuration was perfect for what they had. So sorry, Jeremy, go ahead. Oh, I, I have two very important questions. Uh, the first one, <laughs> did you sing Judas? I did not. I sat down in my seat. <laughs> I, 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 I was sitting down in my seat when they, when the people was going crazy over Judas, not a big Judas fan, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I did give a nice round of applause for Will Ospreay. Uh, for, for, did you I mean, sing elevated? That's honestly the the more important question, I guess. I, I did not sing elevated, but I did give a couple <laughs> a couple head bobs to that song. Like that that you, you want to know it's crazy. That like bangs. you want to know, like it's so crazy because I I did not I'm, I always thought it was a good song, but like just hearing that and like hearing people do the uh, the part of the song and they're like ah oh, spray ah oh, spray. I was like, bro, this shit is crazy. Can I curse on you? I'm sorry, I ain't know if yeah, I curse on you. Good. Okay, we're good. But, we're but, but, <laughs> But but like like when I heard that part of the song, I was like, you hear all these people just singing it in unison, like it, it was crazy. But like Osprey, that that was a I, I think that was like a really like a standout highlight moment. Like not even I, the, I first of all, I think the match was really good. But like just seeing like Osprey get that big, you know, home country ov ovation in front of all these people, like that 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 was one of the standout moments uh, for me that I always remember from that show. Okay, my my actual second question of importance is. Did you witness the backstage altercation between Jack Perry and CM Punk? We need as many accounts as this as possible. You were there. You were at the arena. I feel this is a fair question to ask. I, I, I may or may not have heard a, a punch thrown. Might have heard a little, you know what I'm saying, from, from my from my seat all, all the way all the way back there. But you you want those crazy? So I think it was, but it, this had to be like the third match in second match in or, or something like that and i remember i had i was like let me let me, let me check twitter because it was like one of those gaps in between the matches i was like, let me check twitter first thing i see is a tweet from sean ross sap talking about uh <laughs> it's cm punk and jungle boy i'm like jesus fucking christ i was like bro the show is like i'm like what are we doing bro like the show like it's crazy because like punk I, I, I'm, I'm always uh, laughing at how, like, coming out of some of these shows, like, the, the main talking points is, is not even the show. It's about, like, something that, like, CM Punk did. And, and, then, and then I see this dude at the, uh, with the, the Cauliflower Alley Club, and, like, he, you know, b beloved, taking all these pictures. Like, <laughs> like the, 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 CM Punk is the funniest wrestler. I'm telling you, he really is. But, like, I, I, I saw that, and I was like, I was like, dude, we, we not even halfway through the show. And something already went down. So, I mean... And, and I, I, I uh, try to keep up with it th throughout the show, like as I as I could, like the updates and stuff like that. And I just saw like a varying different reports, and you know, out as we hear now, almost what four or five days later, like it's still being discussed, and things are still coming out. So, and I, I just heard you guys uh, before I jumped on that you guys are talking about, you know, the situation involving all out and the reports about, you know, Ricky Starks and Punk was supposedly supposed to be the plan, and that's not happening anymore. So. Yeah, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love how you're like, we're not even halfway through the show. Buddy, we had not even started the day. <laughs> <laughs> like, for those of us sitting at home, like we knew it. And Jeremy and I talked about it on Monday. We were just like, we both, we saw the, the thing happen in real time where Jack looks at the camera and says, real glass, cry me river. And like, and then this, you guys didn't see it yeah. in the arena. You know, you, you saw, if you watch the video screen, you saw him mouth something to the camera, but you couldn't yeah. hear it. But like when it happened, we all laughed and we were just like, huh, good bit. And then that was it. And then part of me was like, oh, someone's going to talk to someone about this shit. Hey, hey so, so, so I, I actually want to ask y'all, when y'all saw that, I mean, well, did, did the um did the match rundown come out before the show? Like no. before the show started? Okay, no, so, they did. They did announce on the pre-show that Punk and Joe were, were opening. They oh, did oh, announce that. Okay, so so when I the Joe, Joe and Jeremy, when y'all saw Jack Perry do that thing, they, 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 it didn't run through y'all heads that maybe they might run into each other, like at the you know because the match was one happening one after the other. Yeah, it was weird because. You know they do the Jack Perry match, and then it's it's the Punk match, and then the the Omega match was next, or the Buck match was next. Mm. But regardless, it was all back to back. It's like this order doesn't seem yeah. great yeah, that you're having know. CM Punk maybe cross paths <laughs> with all of these guys here. I was like, oh, Tony's just trying to prove that, like, see, they can all cross paths and get along. And it's like, nope, didn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it was a. Uh... Like, uh, cause I I didn't see the um the the when when he mouthed what, what he said to the camera I, I didn't catch that part so when I when I first saw the story I was like 
well, what, what, like, what could have happened between, like, obviously, I knew that there was, there, they weren't the, uh, the best of friends. Like, even I remember a couple months ago when they were doing um, some overseas stuff and they were doing like some Q and A's, and I remember Jack Perry had got asked about CM Punk, and then he was kind of, you, you can, but you can just always tell when somebody is not a fan of another individual, like by, by just by the, by the like the reluctance in which they want to speak about them. And I was just like, oh, I, I don't know about that one. So like when, when I saw the story, I was like, I mean, that makes sense that they don't like each other, but I was trying to figure out like at what point, like what, what could have caused this. So when I saw the, you know, the thing about Woody Miles, I was like, oh, that, you know, that makes sense. Yeah, it, it was uh, not a good situation and kind of overshadowed a lot of the show, but but good memories from the show. You mentioned the, the Osprey Jericho match and then just Osprey's entrance overall. What were uh, your favorite matches and moments from the show? So so I, I really did like FTR versus uh, Young Bucks. Like I, I, I like really, really enjoyed that. Like I, I See, see the thing with uh, the FTR and the Young Bucks, like I like when you see these matches that have uh, that have happened before, you have sort of these like trilogy s matches. Like you always try to, I, I think from the wrestler standpoint, I think they would try to you know format these matches differently or, or try to like pace it differently. And like I, I liked how they sort of started off really slow and then like they sort of just built to the fast pace type of thing and the and the near falls and stuff like that. I always appreciate it. Uh, like that that type of flow throughout the match. I think if I remember correctly, in some of these previous matches, like I think they maybe started off fast and then went slow and then picked it back up or or, or, or some along those lines. But I, I just appreciated like the pacing of the match and like I, I like the uh, like the, the towards the end. I, I'm a big fan of like these uh, like the, when, they, when you get to like these the end of these matches and you sort of get the feeling that the matches is the, the match is nearest in and then like I think it just adds to like the overall like just the climactic climatic whatever the word is climax of it all the feel of it all. And yeah, I, I really like that whole uh, FCI Young Bucks match. And um, what else? I, I, you you want you want to know what? I, I, at first, I, I I didn't really think I was gonna like the stadium stampede, like just from a a, a in venue standpoint. Like I I just didn't think I was gonna enjoy that because I was like, how am I gonna keep up with all this? And mostly, I was just gonna be watching it through the through, through the big screen for 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 most of it. But I ended up in uh enjoying that, and I I really liked um seeing Orange Cassidy, uh, Trent, and uh, Chuck Taylor had that moment when they were all walking back to the arena when they had their arms around each other. I, I thought that was a that was a real cool visual. Like you had these uh, AEW originals, like the, uh, one, one of the OG threes or, or, the, or, the, or the AEW uh, roster. So I, I thought that was a, a cool moment too. And, um, you know, sitting here in the crowd sing MJF's theme song. That was nice. And then Swerve Strickland, uh, he, he had the, the, the special entrance. Like that dude's a superstar. So got, gotta have him had that special entrance. Sting's entrance. That that was cool. Like a, a lot of the edges were cool, man. And like, yeah, I mean, I, I as far as the 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 in ring work, I, I thought everything was was solid. Again, I, I going back to the point about the pay per views going back to back. I was kind of like, like how how is this gonna, you know, pan out in, in comparison? Because I know people felt like you know again that they should have got this big dream match card and stuff like that. But again, I, I thought that they delivered for you know for 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 what that was. And you know, again, speaking just from the in venue arena stadium experience i i, I enjoyed myself and i had a good time what uh what obviously the, the historical side of things would have done it but like what what made you want to go to the show because i only found out that you were going because i was listening to pollock and thurston and john pollock had said that you were going and i was like oh okay that's surprising <laughs> Because anyone who was going was making a big deal out of going to London and then yeah. the show. So what made you want to go? And like, it just talk to me about you know the process because it's it's not a fun trip all the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So, so I uh I, I was I was planning to go to London for my birthday, but my birthday was the week. My birthday was on the nineteenth, the week before. So when I was like, I was thinking about it, and I was just like, I might as well just turn it into like an all in trip and just make like d delay delay the trip a week. And just go the week so I could have more stuff to do. So that 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 was like it. Like I don't have like some like super long story about it. Like that, that was just mostly <laughs> it. Cause I, I was gonna go the week before, but I was just like, you might as well just go when all in is going. I mean, when all in is happening, and just make it a whole whole thing. And I and I knew um you know like a couple of people I knew out there like uh my guy Martin Bushby was gonna be out there that weekend. So I was like, let's let, let, let's just go out there and you know and I, I could be a part of my birthday celebration, I guess. And yeah, that that, that was mostly it, it. It was more so about the birthday than anything, but. <laughs> Let's say all in was planned around your birthday instead of your birthday planned around all in. That's what really happened. Yeah, here. but I, yeah, but that that that's it. That's like the whole uh, the whole thing right there. The whole idea behind it. 
Because what is was... Tony Khan going to do? It's plan events around your... <laughs> 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 Tony, Tony Khan doesn't care about anybody's personal <laughs> life. He's planning all these events around my personal life and ruining them all. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me just uh, make it clear, like... We we we. I don't want nobody to think I'm being like serious right now. I'm joking, like about the uh, but uh, but uh, yeah. The, the all in was of course was already scheduled, but like I had thought about it, and I was just like, let me just delay this a week, and then we can just make this whole weekend, and I can have more stuff to do throughout that weekend. But it it, it was more so about like just going out and seeing London because that was my first time out the country. I've never been out the U.S. before, so like that was my first time, and I really had a good time, like just going around and sightseeing and seeing all that stuff and. Like just just being around different parts of London. Of course, I didn't get to do everything, but I got to do a lot of stuff. Took a lot of photos and videos and stuff like that. So that that was like a a very very cool uh, weekend for me that I'm always gonna remember. I was gonna ask, you know, was it your first time in, in London? Yeah. And then the kind of stuff that that you did do. Somebody in the chat asked if you if you got Greg's while you were out there. I did not get Greg's. I did not get Greg's. Uh, I heard about Greg's and I heard about uh, what's the name? What's the stuff I wanted? To, I wanted to try Nando's. Kept mm. hearing about that. So I, you should have hung out with Punk after <laughs> All In. He's getting the endos for everybody. <laughs> Bro, I, you know, I, I saw the thing about uh, go, go back, go back to Punk real quick. I saw the thing about uh, about AEW, like them, the, some somebody not picking him up from Heathrow Airport, and like him having to catch the train. And I saw the picture of the fan who took a picture <laughs> with him on the train. I was like, "Bro, what in the hell is going on here? Like, what, like, what are we doing?" But, uh, but, but yeah, on, on Friday, dude, I, I landed and. I went to the, uh, the first thing I did, I went to, I got to the hotel, my hotel, and I stayed at the uh, the uh, London Marriott. Um, and it was like a real nice place. I think it was called Mita, Mita Ville, if I'm pronouncing it right. I, I, I said it wrong when I got to the airport and the dude, like he corrected me instantly. I was like, okay, buddy. I was like, thanks for the, <laughs> thanks for the correction. Appreciate it. But uh, I, first thing I said, first place I did, first place I went, I went to uh, Westfield Mall I wanted to see like what was around there and like just checked out some of the the clothing stores and some of the other stores that they had and it was a that mall was big as hell really nice mall tried out some food that i never tried before i think it was like i had some korean barbecue i think that was my first time trying that and that was great and then after that i went to piccadilly circus and i was there from like bro i was there from like 8 p.m to like midnight it that that it thing was like times square x vegas like that, that that's that's like the best way that I can describe that. And I, I saw um who I saw Satnam Singh down uh Piccadilly Square. It was hard not to notice him. Like you, you walk you walking down there, you see this like seven foot tall dude. Like he was like hard not to notice this dude. So yeah, that it was uh that that was fun seeing, you know, seeing all the people down there. But that place was that place was crazy, bro. Like it was so many people down there, and that place did not go to sleep uh at all. And then uh but wait, did you did you guys want me to like continue or like did we uh you can tell us it? all about your, oh, your oh, 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 okay because I, I didn't know if we had like a time limit and I ain't no. really, like, just rambling and shit like that. So, no, uh, it's good. So so on Saturday I went to Saturday I woke up and I went to this place called um free it was called Freeform or, or something. It was like this art gallery, like where the, everything was like 3D and like they had like at, like the entire floors and everything was like it was like this moving pattern bro this is like the coolest shit i've seen in my life like i could not believe it like it was it, it was beautiful in there like it really was and i'm very glad that i that, that i went there i had me a traditional english breakfast that was nice tea and crumpets oh no 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 no, 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 no. i'm talking about well, well, I mean, I, 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 oh, yeah. well i'm 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 i'm, I'm kind of lying a little bit i said traditional english breakfast I, I basically just got like the shit that i eat here like in the states <laughs> but like because like I, I saw like the tomatoes and the beans and stuff like that, and I was like, eh, I don't know. I was like, I don't know about that. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm gonna stick to what I know. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm gonna just stick to that. And then that's when I met up with, uh, with my guy Martin Bushby, who I did the uh, Bushby and Thompson uh, Wrestling Adventure podcast with over at Post Wrestling. And Martin and his wife, uh, great people. They they showed me around to. Um, we went to Buckingham Palace. They showed me the Big Ben Clock. Um, and we, we went like to some other places too. They took me like the mom, uh, mom and pop shop. Uh, and that, that, that was that was really good. I had fish and chips for the first time. That was nice. And uh, we, we caught the train to Camden. Uh, did like a, did some bar hopping a little bit. Met with uh, another person, Braden Harrington, that works at Post Wrestling. That was great. Uh, had, had like a couple of drinks and stuff like that. Ate some food. That was just a great time overall. And then uh, one of the things that that I really appreciated. 
uh, was Martin and his wife, like, cause the, we, we caught the train there and the, the trains were closing. Like, it was like really, like, we were like, we were pushing that shit. Like I'm talking about like to the point, like we was with, we all like it, it. It was a point where I, I thought legitimately that we were going to get stuck. But I mean, we could have just caught an Uber out. But Camden is like sort of a, a ways away from where I was staying. So I mean, it, it wasn't like a big deal. Like definitely could have caught an Uber back. But I, I just wanted to make sure I say this publicly. Like I appreciate it, Martin and his wife, bro. They made it like a fucking like priority to like make sure that I got back like to my hotel. Like I'm talking about one time. Like these like my fucking like English parents out there. Like, but they was just like make it. Like they were like, no, we're making sure you get back. We're and and. I think they they weren't even staying like nowhere near me, and I you know I make sure to check in check in with them afterwards to make sure they got home. But like I like again like I could have just easily caught an Uber back, but bro, it's just the principle of the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like the like cause they brought me out here, and they was just like, you know, we gonna make sure brought me out to that part of London. It was like we gonna make sure that you get back like to where you where you're staying, and like I, you know what I'm saying? It, it, you just appreciate little stuff like that. So I I just wanted to definitely shout out Martin and his wife because they they showed me a good time on Saturday. And then Sunday, uh, woke up, went to the Natural History Museum. Very, very cool. I took a lot of pictures of that. That was a that was a great museum. That was a big ass museum. Uh, they had a lot of different exhibits and stuff like that. A lot of things on display. Got like a couple little touristy keychains and a and a, a London sweater, the big ass London logo <laughs> on it. So I'm, a, I'm a definitely with that with, with that uh with, with that this fall. So yeah, and then went to uh, went to All In, and yeah. Uh, that was it. Oh yeah, I, I had got uh for for a little bit. I had got stuck out uh Wembley Stadium just just a little because it was hard to catch an Uber out because it was so many damn people. So what I did was I went to this place called the Canada Gardens and I just waited there and it was like right down the street and I just waited. It, it was like a nice ass view right there and it was like um food places down the street. So I just waited out there for like an hour and then I eventually got back to my hotel. So yeah, and then caught a flight out next morning and then that was uh that was London. I was yeah, I was gonna ask because after the show wrapped at Wembley, there Oof. were people who uh, Oof, either, Joe. <laughs> it, it sounded it was like WrestleMania 35 at, uh, at MetLife. It was like nobody could get home because everything is shut down. You Man. you clearly had a, a an idea and decided you know you got some time, so you went and just killed some time out in a nice part of town. It, 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 it was on the fly, Joe. This wasn't some, like some planned thing. This no, no, no. <laughs> but at least you knew you were going to like sit there and wait. Yeah. You were just like, oh, I'm yeah. going to go do my thing over here because, you know, you can sit and wait, but like you just get more and more frustrated. So it's funny for just going. Dude, so at, when, when I got out, like I already had it in my head. I was like, it's going to be hell trying to get out of here because it was the same thing when I went to uh, Mania in Dallas. But the, the only reason I was able to get out of that situation was because the Uber driver who drove me to AT&T, AT&T Stadium, AT&T Stadium, he told me about a place called Texas Live that was like a 10 minute walk down the street from AT&T Stadium. He was like, dude, after the show, just go in there and just wait until the phase that now. Go in there, get you some food and just chill out. And I was like, let me go do that. I went down there party packing place like it was like it was real nice in there went in there sat down for like an hour ate some food so i did the exact same thing at the wembley uh i waited for, first i tried to see if i could get an uber out of there immediately that did not work at all <laughs> D- dumb move very very dumb move and i uh so i just went down to the uh canada gardens uh sat down there because it was right next door to wembley like literally right next door nice area a bunch of like benches and stuff like that like they had like the little water fountain shit that was like spraying all it it was a real nice place and then it was a a mcdonald's not too far and a gas station over there and stuff like that so yeah i just sit there and just waited for like an hour hour 30 and just you know waited for the feds to go down and waited till i got a ride and i I think i caught one like around what like 12 20 12 30 and then yeah i was out and it, it was cool it was a great time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you one last wrestling question here before we wrap up. And, you know, all out last week or all in last week, all out this week, booking the back to back shows. And now we have all outs where I think a lot of people are like, I don't know about this card right here. What do you what do you make of Tony running? And you you are in this as much as I am, Andrew, when it comes to like keeping up with the news and the media and all of this stuff of what do you what, just what do you make of them? Debatable. No, 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 no. Debatable. You're, you're better. No, you were better than me. Uh, Joe, 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 do you, Joe, do you see this? Why, why, Joe, do you see this? Why, listen, why, why? Listen, I, you both, you both are top of your field to me. I can't. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. 
I said it earlier before you were on. You're both you're both real real damn good at this. And for those for those who don't follow Andrew's work already, like what's wrong with you? If you if you haven't followed it, you've seen it. So get it. Yo, get, get that, up. Thank you for what I've been trying to tell Jeremy. Can, can, let, you know what? Let's just move on to the day. What was the question? What was the question? <laughs> Let's just get to the question. The question. The question. And Jeremy just wanted to this <laughs> Oh, this is what Andrew and I always do is we just praise each other and then neither of us can take a compliment. So we just have to keep complimenting each other. Um, <laughs> the question is just running the back-to-back -back shows and you know how, your thoughts on it. And do you think like it does take away a little bit from, from All Out? Oh, oh yeah, it, it definitely does. I, I feel like All Out looks like a, it looks like a, um, like a super-sized edition of Dynamite. That's what it looks like. It, it looks like a like something that you would see like maybe for like a, you know, a fight for the fallen, fighter fest, you know, th things of that sort. Like a special edition of Dynamite. That, that that's just like really what it looks like. And I even uh, I, Tony said on the um, pre All Out media call that he was thinking about putting Orange and Mox at All In, but he decided to hold off on that and save for All Out. Smart move on that one, definitely because I like especially considering that. Um, you know the the report that CM Punk and Ricky Starks were supposed to be on that show. I would assume that that was going to be the main event. So now I'm looking at the card and I'm like, like what's going to be the headliner for this? Like, well, I was going to ask y'all, like, what do y'all think is going to be the headliner for all? Like, I was maybe thinking like Orange and Mox, maybe because I'm like, especially at that promo that Orange cut on Dynamite, I was like, that that, was that, that, yeah, that was great. So I was going to ask y'all, like, what, what did y'all think about who was going to close the show uh, on Sunday? We talked about it on Wednesday, and, and we both came to the same conclusion, and that was before the Orange Cassidy promo. Mm -hmm. Once once we saw the opening, just basically the through thread of Dynamite, it was pretty apparent that uh, Mox and or Orange Cassidy was going to headline. And and I said this online. I said the uh, the International Championship is the like highest <laughs> level championship <laughs> in AEW, even beyond the world right now, because the world title is tied up with the Ring of Honor tag titles, and MJF doesn't want to compete, you know, in kayfabe. Uh, so it makes sense that you get the guy who's been wrestling nonstop putting up the title. And if it goes to Mox, let's say Moxley wins, then you're transferring everything and the prestige of that title to someone who's a former world champion. Like it continues to build prestige. Basically out of this, like the title doesn't lose anything regardless of the outcome. And I love yeah. that. So I can yeah. see this being the main event and it makes perfect sense to be there. Yeah. Now I, I was going to add like, um, so if, if, if so I, I kind of got the feeling that Orange's his reign is probably going to end at, at all. I mean, because like look, if it's anybody, you know what I'm saying? Like the, I, I think the last time I was like so like pro Orange should lose this match is when he faced Swerve. Like I was like, dude, Swerve needs to win this time. Like this is this is Swerve's time. Like he should win this match. And then they didn't go through with it. And I'm like, now I'm like I'm back at that same feeling with Mox. I'm like, if, if there's anybody. That's going to do this, and I, again, I felt the same way about Swerve. I was like, "There's anybody that's going to do this," and, and in this, this specific situation, I'm like, "It's it's, it's going to be Mox who, who he's going to lose the title to." And then then Orange pin Claudio at uh at All In. Yeah. So I, I would assume that he's going to be next in line to at some point challenge for the ROH World Title, and then may, maybe that'll be like the catalyst to, um, you know, uh, uh, Eddie Kingston getting involved with uh, Claudio again. And then you know they do that ROH World Title match at some point. You know what? I, I wouldn't mind that being that Grand Slam. To be honest with you, uh, Eddie versus Claudio, I really wouldn't mind that. Um, I, I still want that to be a, a final battle. I think yeah, that final that's, a, that's a good call. Good call. That, that gets people in the room. That and the Billy Starks Athena match. I think those are the two big anchor like matches for final battle. Because they're really that's a good call. That's a good call. Yeah, for sure. Nah, you know what? Joe just changed my opinion. If I say that for final battle, save it for final battle. <laughs> I keep saying save for final battle, but also like I see the argument for Grand Slam. Final like, battle is a ways away. Yeah. Like, it is. To, it is to hold all this off. Yeah, and you could do Eddie Kingston, you know, not winning the title at Grand Slam, some shenanigans, and it'll get huge heat, and Claudio will be more and more hated. But where do they? They they announce final battles happening, but they did they announce the location or not? They just said December. They and just usually, said it you know, it's end of December. Yeah. Okay. Well, regardless, like it's. It's more the the fact that like you could have it as a, a two you know do the match twice and then maybe do the third as a blow off in, in the new year but as it stands now like it would just be a final battle and just make it a big moment fill whatever venue you're going to and that's that's good enough for me. Yeah. yeah man. Andrew, I appreciate you joining us today, man. Uh, man, I appreciate y'all having me on, man. <laughs> this is good. It's, 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 it's good to see y'all, man. Joe, I haven't seen you since Jeremy's wedding. 
I know, and it's good to Everything see you. It's, it's good to see y'all, man. And I'm uh, I'm glad to see the success of In the Weeds. Y'all doing some great work, excellent work, great guests. I'm proud, man. I'm, 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 see what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to sneak Jeremy on some of these uh, what's the name? Like when y'all see I had these guests, I'm like, sneak I gotta compliment. I, I, no, I'm trying I'm trying to get the quotes out <laughs> from the interviews <laughs> before Jeremy starts transcribing. <laughs> that, I'm gonna set up the article. I'd be like, see, I got this up, bro. I got this I, up. It'll, but but are you good, Jeremy? I, Oh, I got I got the Becca one running today. I've heard fighting Taylor Swift and Lady Gaga. Nobody's taking that one. That's a real thing, Andrew. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's not actually gonna fight them. Oh, oh, oh no. I, 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 okay, no. I, I, yeah. I, I thought you meant like that was like an actual like thing that I was like, oh shit. Andrew, do you know how much stuff we have manifested just by like writing it in like headlines and everything? You know how this works. Like we will write a headline off of an interview someone does, and then all of a sudden it's it turns into a thing. So, yeah, like you know how this works. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, man, but I, I appreciate y'all having me on, man. This was a uh, this was a good time. I was definitely looking for. I'm sorry I couldn't make it on Wednesday. My schedule stuff got changed. But I'm glad I was able to make it today, and yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of both of you, man. And it was it was definitely great seeing you at uh, Jeremy's wedding, which is almost four year anniversary coming up, which is fucking crazy. That yeah, is a two month yeah away. a month away. A month and a day. A month that is day. Yeah. insane, bro. That that was a four year ago. Insane. It's gone by. It's gone by quickly. Uh, yeah, but it's it's been a legitimately the best year of my life. So uh, a lot of stuff has happened, but wonderful, wonderful wife. Um, no. I'll, I'll put her over later. I don't know. <laughs> Andrew, let everybody know where, where they can find you at. Yeah, they can uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at uh, AD Thompson underscore underscore uh, the YouTube channel, Andrew Thompson Interviews. And uh, you check out my written work over at Post Wrestling. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Andrew, Go thanks. Andrew Thompson, the best at this. Everyone follow him <laughs> on Twitter, even though it doesn't tweet a lot. So just go over to Post Yeah, I don't and, talk and read all his work. Just, I, I, that's I, why I didn't. But, I didn't but, know you were going to to all in. Like I messaged Joel is the one who told me, and he just told the story <laughs> of how he found out. So I messaged you, and I'm like, I, I got a scoop that you're going to all in. Is this true? <laughs> but uh, the only people that like knew, because I mean, it's just that like a thing. Like I, you know what I'm saying? I was just like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going. It, it, I mean, it's it's like obviously it's a big because it's my first time out the country. But like it was just, I was like, you know, it's cool. I'm going to London. I'm gonna have a good time. Like I, I didn't really want to make a big. I don't like making a big deal out of anything. So I was just like, you know, it's, but just go out see, there, just have a good time. Have this is what this is what I always love and appreciate about you. And one of the many things you have taught me uh, in, in this line of work is that you just put your head down, get your work done. You don't need to comment <laughs> on everything and you just do what you need to do. And I tried to do my best at that. I got to get my jokes off and stuff. Oh, but yeah, always. Just, you know what? Oh, you, hey, hey, let me tell you something. Get the jokes, joke, jokes <laughs> before anything. Let me tell you. Yeah. Let, let, let me let me tell y'all folks of a good piece of life advice. Never let a good joke get it, get in front of a good. Don't don't ever let a good joke ruin a good story. Oh, I, I think I worded that right. I, I guess, but y'all get the essence of what I'm trying to say. Please, please continue, Jeremy. Get the jokes. I was like, I don't, yeah, then you I don't get the care jokes to home. jump in. I don't care to jump into the discourse on Twitter and get into all of that, or sometimes yeah. even give legitimate opinions because then people will take it the wrong way. I'm like, I'm just here to crack jokes. That's it. Otherwise, I'm just trying to get work done because, as you know, Andrew, there's no shortage of work to do on any week in this silly business that we cover, especially these last couple of weeks. So, yeah. Andrew, take care. I hope you have a good weekend. I uh, hope, uh, you know, enjoy all of the wrestling that is out there this weekend and uh don't work too hard because i'm gonna try not to work hard either what if we just took the weekend off andrew what do you think would happen i don't even want to think about what happened <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I, i'm pretty sure the wrestling news cycle would be perfectly fine but i, I don't know I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get back in uh in the, in the swing of things today because i've been kind of chilling the last couple of days so i'm gonna try to you deserve try, it try, try, try to get back in action uh to, today and in, in, in this weekend so yeah, so we 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 gonna see, but I'm pretty sure things will be fine. Shout, shout out to y'all, man. Y'all doing some great work, and I hope y'all have a, a great rest of your show as well, and a great rest Thanks, of buddy. the in the weeds, man. In the weeds, we Thanks, in the weeds buddy. right now. All I'm the in the weeds. <laughs> the the wife just messaged and said that you and I should just like go to a pay per view together, just take it off, and then see it, how it, much it, work it just it's vlog. Hard. <laughs> they just well, vlog it yeah. We'll, yeah we'll do we'll do content yeah the problem yeah, is the do. vlog that you two would do you'd be sitting in the stands with your laptops open just like yeah, just watch my <laughs> 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 i'm about to say all, all you fucking hearing is like the 
in the background, just the, the keyboards and shit like that's all you want to hear. That'd be hilarious. That'd be hilarious. And say, Jeremy, you got a what's name? Your birthday coming up, bro? Would you like two weeks? A week away? Allegedly, yeah. Alleged, alle allegedly, allegedly. Joe, Joe, allegedly, 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 allegedly. Two weeks. allegedly you uh, thank you, Andrew. You're the best. Uh, I will talk to you later. We talk just about every day. So I appreciate you, man. All right. All right, Joel and Jeremy, man. It's good talking to y'all, man. Have a great right, rest buddy. of y'all show. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you. Peace. Take that care. Is, that is the goat right there.